Hey everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your sun in Scorpio and your moon in Leo. And this combination is double fixed energy. What we can say about that first and foremost is that it's very steadfast, but it's also very stubborn. The signs Scorpio and Leo square off to one another and that means that they create friction when they are within a certain degree span apart from one another. And it's a tense angle, which means that the sun and moon can appear to be experiencing some kind of obstacle blockage that makes it hard to for the for these two planets to cooperate. That's what a square does. It, it creates this, um, what we call it, like an impasse of sorts. Now, all of you will not have an official square between your sun and moon because, it, like I said, it has to be within a certain degree span apart from one another. You can check um, the astrological chart for the official designation of that. Um, I use astro.com and they have an aspects table that is included with the um, chart. I have said on multiple occasions that I believe that when people have inner planets and especially sun, moon, or rising sign, it, with the combination of Scorpio and Leo, that it can be quite difficult sometimes, and it can indicate that the ego is involved. In, well, I, and I, I would also say inner planets like Venus and Mars too. Um, and it's not really, that's not throwing shade on anybody with this combination, because the ego is something that is often given a lot of... Um, criticism, but I feel like there's a healthy ego that is when we feel a sense of pride about our, our accomplishments or just our talents and we love ourselves and there's a sense of personal dignity, you could call it. But what can happen is that that can get distorted when somebody has had their pride hurt, you know, for instance, emotional abuse or even physical abuse, sexual abuse growing up can create a sense of somebody's dignity being taken from them. And because the person feels low self-esteem, they can overcompensate by being um, arrogant, overbearing, and things like that. So that's something that can be associated especially with Leo. But Scorpio can have its own complicated um, attitude that is problematic as well. And part of it is the fact that Scorpio is a fixed water sign. And so water, this is a really interesting thing because... The moon represents the emotions, but by the same token, because the sun sign of Scorpio is in the water element, it can also deal with the emotions. And so the person who is a sun in Scorpio, and even I would say this about the moon in Scorpio too, is that that kind of a person can have a hard time for, with forgiveness. There can be kind of a hardening of the emotions. And that's what the fixed element or fixed modality can do is it can crystallize things. It can make things um, kind of solid, but you could say rigid. Um, you know, when your emotions are free flowing, um, forgiveness has that oxygen to be able to, that space to be able to exist because forgiveness isn't about forgetting. It's simply about seeing the bigger picture and seeing the good in everyone 
and realizing that even when people don't act their best, they're hurting, they just want to be happy, they don't feel good about themselves, whatever. And it doesn't even mean that you have to deal with that person. But a lot of times Scorpio people feel that um, it's almost like they, I'm not saying that you're playing God, but you feel like people should get their just desserts, that they should receive their karma, maybe an, maybe instant karma if they do you wrong. And um, it's, you know, it's human nature, it's understandable, but it can create a lot of um, complications in your life, I, I guess I would call it, because it can prevent you from being able to move forward. And I think that this combination, because the moon is in Leo, um, Leo is a sign that is fixed as well as I stated. So it can put you in a rut where you find it hard if you have a, maybe an emotional setback where you can take a long time to kind of recover from it. Now, I say all of these things that are challenging Scorpio, so that you can see what you might need to work on. It's not to discourage you and to say, oh, well, too bad, this is what you have in this lifetime, because I don't believe anything is set in stone. These, these um, readings that I do, first of all, I call it spiritual entertainment, but I also say that if it resonates with you, if you feel that you are like this, that it just tells you that this is a pattern. And patterns can be broken. They can be changed. Knowledge is power. So looking at these two planets separately, um, the sun is what we aspire to become. So we even think of our um, career choices and things like that. And also our core, core personality traits, you know, ultimately, if I had to choose one planet, of course, I would think the sun for that one. And so the Scorpio person is very self-contained. Um, you're not, you know, because the sun is how you shine your light. That's why I say core personality traits. Um, and you may be kind of reserved, but it's kind of like the poker face. There is something going on beneath the surface. Still waters run deep, for sure. The rising sign is important to note because if your rising sign is fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, you, along with that moon sign, that could override a lot of um, the kind of more subdued energy of Scorpio, but don't get it twisted. Just because a Scorpio person may not be effusive or outwardly expressive in how they behave doesn't mean that they don't make their mark um, on other people when they are coming into situations. I've done these videos with Scorpio rising and that is more of an overt thing because the rising sign represents the appearance, the mannerisms, the way you behave when you're with other people. But the sun sign can definitely play into it too. And I like to say that when somebody who has Scorpio comes into a room, it can really alter the vibration of that room to the extent that people sit up and notice. And it might not be that they say anything or that they do anything, but they could definitely be feeling something. And sometimes, because I, I would say that this combination of sun and moon can be something where you crave power. And therefore, you may get off on this ability that you have to kind of change the tone or the mood in the room, but it could be kind of this uh, vampiric, vampiric or whatever you say, like kind of an energy vampire thing. 
if it's expressed in the lower nature. In other words, the the person who is the Scorpio could kind of, who isn't in the highest um, vibration can you utilize it's almost like black magic in a sense where they can control others or manipulate to kind of intimidate other people and that is what people do when they don't feel powerful so I'm sure that most of the people listening to this are not of a low vibration and you're going to be um, above board when you deal with your um, gifts because you you do have these psychic gifts and it's very important when people are um, operating in that realm that they are always above board, that they're never doing anything underhanded because the lower nature of Scorpio is to be manipulative, but it can actually be manipulative at a psychic level. Um, also, another thing that Scorpios can do is they have great insight into other people's, um, you know, psychological makeup. This is just one of those things that Scorpio and Pluto um, placements can can have. And because of that temptation to try to gain power, um, some may try to use psychological tactics to kind of manipulate people to give them what they want. And that's kind of knowing what somebody else's Achilles heel is, you know, their weakness. And this is obviously not ethical behavior. So, um, it's, it's funny, you know, what, what is that saying? Um, to those for whom much is given, much is required, something like that. Um, Scorpio is a very powerful sign and Leo is as well, but I'm, I'm thinking of Scorpio in terms of the psychic ability. And so when you have this, it's like a God given gift you have to um, be very, very honorable about how you deal with it. And um, therefore, in terms of professions, being a healer is a no-brainer. Some of you may have a fascination for psychology. And um, psychology isn't just being a psychologist, it could be being a social worker, a therapist of some kind that is not the, you know, there are all kinds of therapists, maybe even a marital therapist. If you have, you know, the moon or some inner plants in Libra, you may be fascinated by relationships. But um, with the moon in, in Leo, positive thinking can be something that is very appealing to you. So the law of attra attraction, anything to do with um, bettering yourself, some of these, even these people who are doctors like Dr. Joe Dispenza and people like that, they talk about rewiring the brain, but they mix in that mystical stuff as well. And some of this can be very appealing to you because Leo being a fire sign is really um, tends to be quite positive and expansive. And I said positive thinking, even though the moon sign is about feeling, because a lot of times when I'm discussing these things, thoughts and feelings almost feel interchangeable. You know, when we have a thought, it invokes a feeling and vice versa. When we, when we feel things, it reminds us of things. So we're thinking about maybe past memories and things like that. So the point is that you could be a great life coach in some cases because you can encourage people, but you also can have great insight into their basic nature, what makes them tick. Being 
an actor is always something that Leo excels in. And because it's in the moon position, the moon can indicate creativity. People, let me just say a couple of things about the moon and Leo. You will be a warm person. You might be touchy feely. Um, I don't know about Scorpio. I think water signs tend to be touchy feely too, but um, definitely fire signs can be like that. And there can be a generosity of spirit where, which is what I mean by that with Leo is that the Leo person can, who is balanced, can see the best in other people and they are encouraging. It's, it's something where they, they just are very loving people. What could trip you up is that if you do have a square with the sun, if you have other things going on that are hard angles with your inner planets, it might be more that the, the, the shadow side of Leo takes over and kind of blocks some of that warmth where you feel more, um, well, you might have a, a tendency, um, with the moon and Leo to, f to have felt in the past, even ignored because the shadow side comes in, uh, with the moon position, like maybe, you know, Leo wants to be the center of attention. Well, with the moon and Leo, something may have prevented that from happening or even getting attention. And the moon can represent the mother. So if you had a mother uh, who behaved like a Leo, maybe she was the one who always needed to be uh, given attention. And she might not be a son in Leo. She may just um, kind of exhibit those traits. And that was very like a narcissistic personality, for instance. Then that might have been very difficult to deal with because you felt neglected in some cases. I'm not saying that all people who have this moon sign had, have had a mother like that, but in case, I just wanted to touch upon that because sometimes that might be the case. She may even have been competitive with you. Um, and so, so this, moon position can make you naturally seek out attention. And it's a very important if you have the moon in Leo to ask yourself what that is all about, if that is happening. Now it's one thing, you know, when you can channel that into the inner, the arts and entertainment, that is a constructive use of that. Because somebody who's on stage, they're appropriately gaining attention. Somebody who is creating drama, who's being very loud and obnoxious and, you know, whatever, just attention seeking, that is not a constructive use of that energy. And a lot of times when people are doing things like that, it's because they don't have anything positive to actually um, express all of this creativity that is probably constantly pouring out of you in a positive way. So I would definitely say anybody who has the moon in Leo, even apart from the sun sign, but especially with the sun sign, because water can be creative as well, is that you make a point of doing something creative, even if it's like a hobby, even if you have no aspirations of doing it professionally, that you just honor that part of yourself. And of course, that's if you feel that that is true for you. There might be some outliers, some people who don't really feel creative and you shouldn't do something that you don't feel like doing. But if you do really enjoy that kind of thing. If you're like a decent singer, go to an open mic. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to be accepted in an audition or anything like that. You just can do it for fun. And you would be surprised 
how fulfilling it can be. Go to a poetry reading. Um, you know, whatever. Do something that makes you feel like you're, you could be on stage. You can have people looking at you, but they will also be inspired by you. In terms of love, this combination can also experience a lot of challenges from the standpoint of Scorpio can have trust issues um, based on past traumatic experiences that, you know, have been hard for you to shake. And so you may feel like, is this person going to be faithful to me? Are they going to or are they going to abandon me at some point? And I, I couldn't, you know, stand that happening to me. Um, Scorpio is like Taurus, can be possessive. And um, I think especially for Scorpio, there's a suspicious mind that can actually work as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because if you find that you're um, accusing other people of cheating, that they might just say, you know what, maybe I will do it because um, they're accusing me anyway, so why not? I'm not saying that would be justified. I'm just saying that, you know, you push people away when you don't trust them. And really, when you think about it, um, it starts with having good judgment because the better judgment you can have on the front end, the less likely it's going to be that you're going to be with somebody who would actually betray you. Um, and um, Leo wants to be given attention Leo wants loyalty, demands loyalty, because Leo is loyal. This is a very loyal combination, being double fixed energy. And being loyal is awesome. But the, the truth is that sometimes it's merely that this combination doesn't like change that much. So they're, they're willing to hang around even if there have been problems in the relationship, because the alternative is having to turn their life upside down and start anew. And that can be highly unappealing to a person with this combination. But you are a romantic person, I feel. And if you can choose wisely, if you can... Um, really be confident enough to not be afraid of opening up to some way, because I think that could be um, difficult for a Scorpio person. And with the moon and Leo, I think you can be very warm and maybe even open, spontaneous emotionally. But I always feel that that Scorpio energy that influence coming from an inner planet like that can keep that person's um core you know deep self under lock and key unless they are absolutely positive that they're with the right person and the danger is that if you wait too long and you're in a relationship with someone that person may sense that you're withholding and they may even um, feel like they can't trust you because of that because they might sense that there's something up, that there's something not quite right with that situation. So, you know, it's very important to have, um, I feel like it's very important to have faith that the person that you are um, dealing with is going to respect you and not to fear betrayal because I do feel that um, self-fulfilling prophecies do happen. And then you can have a lifetime partner because um, this could bode very well for 
a um, long-term partner because you, I, I feel like this is a very dynamic uh, combination. Um, this sun and moon sign uh, together, but it's just that you have to work around some of the challenges that each of these influences present. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.